Okay, I'm back. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot to bring the one, the ornament that I stitched. I'll have to show you. Anyway, so I have two new, fi two finishes. Uh, some haul that I bought both for myself and also a haul that Santa Claus brought me on Christmas. And kind of go through some of my new plans. So for all of you out there who've been tuning in, you know that I enjoy craft beer almost as much as I love cross stitching. And I usually share something I'm drinking on these videos. I'm not drinking beer today. I am drinking, this is for all my fellow Kentuckians out there. I am drinking the very last AL81 that I snagged back from my last trip to Kentucky. This is just a ginger ale that's very local to the Eastern Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky region that I'm from. And it's delicious. Not alcoholic, but just as good. Just as good. So that's what I'm drinking today. So jump in, life updates as it affects the stitchy parts of my life. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a couple of weeks, y'all. So six weeks ago, I had a little fall, just stupid twisted my ankle and then just fell. When I fell, I broke my tailbone though. And for anyone who's had a tailbone injury, my condolences, that stuff hurts. It shouldn't hurt as much as it does. It feels like a very much a crybaby injury to have. People have real broken bones, it was just your tailbone, but it does affect your life. And I realized how much not being able to sit comfortably affected my ability to stitch. So because I have not been able to sit comfortably for going on six weeks now, um, I have not stitched a whole lot. So the cross stitching part of my life just kind of went while we're waiting to get better. But as I've been getting better, I have been able to stitch. Um, I was able to essentially work my standing frame to being like almost full standing standing frame because standing is literally the only thing I could do that wasn't painful. So I figured out that I could just stand and stitch and that was good. But you kind of get to a point that's like kind of working, standing on your feet is hard. It is hard to stitch on your feet too. So that wasn't a great solution. So I haven't had much stitching time for the past couple of weeks. I did get a chance to do these two finishes though. I didn't get all the Christmas stitching that I kind of wanted to do, but there's always next year. So first things first, Christmas stitching. I completed this beautiful ornament. Isn't it lovely? It kind of, I think, looks better if you pull it back. You can see a little bit more of like the pattern overall. So this is the Fair Isle designs that I got. Oh my goodness, it's her online store, I'm forgetting it. I'm gonna put it in the notes. It was a wonderful online store, wonderful, beautiful cross-stitch designs. Um, but this was one of three. There's also one that is red, and then one that is blue, designed to be like snowflakey. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I used these pre-cut wooden, um, wooden, it could be really anything, but ornaments, I got them from Michael's in a pack of like four or five of them and use just regular DMC floss. Because the holes are so big though, I used a full six strands of floss for this whole thing. This took an entire skein of DMC to complete the entire thing. There was nothing left over. Um, so it is a floss hog of a pattern doing it on this particular pre-cut ornament. Um, but I think they came out really beautiful. I I think I shared a couple of videos ago that I had scored a whole bunch of vintage floss um, from my local reuse craft store, Thistle. And it wasn't like one or two skeins of each color, it was like 10 skeins of each color. So I am just up to my eyeballs in about 20 or 30 different colors of this vintage DMC. And luckily, green was one of those colors. So using a whole skein on this, was no skin off my nose. This was easy to do. It was a cute, fun stitch. I liked it a lot. I'd like to do the other two designs. I'll have to um, kind of change them a little bit to fit this particular size with the amount of holes. But I think they'll be really cute. Gonna look great on my tree for next year. So yeah, this was my one stitchy finish. And my next stitchy finish, da 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 da, da is my first miniature artwork. This, oh. Every time I look at it, those colors are just gorgeous. 
so vibrant, just so vibrant. I think it's absolutely lovely. So this was the O'Keeffe Poppy that was designed by um, Cross Stitch Obsession. I bought it on Etsy. Super easy pattern to follow, really well done. I'll be going back to Cross Stitch Obsession to get a few more of the mini art patterns. Um, Cause I think I'd like to have a couple, you know, kind of do a little mini display. So I found a couple of Van Goghs and some Monet and we're just gonna make it really beautiful. But Georgia O'Keeffe, she's one of my all time favorites. And I just thought this came out so well. Just absolutely beautiful. It's itty bitty, it's like two inches. So now I'm gonna have the fun of finding itty bitty frames, like beautiful wood frames to put these in. So anyone who has done these miniature arts, I would love to hear about it. How many did you do? How did you frame them? How are you displaying them? Kind of what's your plan? What's the purpose? How are you doing it? What's it been like? I just think it's so much fun. So yes, we have a finish, yay! Which is good because your girl needs to finish some of her whips. I've talked before about how I used to be a monogamous stitcher with just usually a big project, maybe one little thing going on at the same time. And this past year I kind of exploded and I think I have four or five large projects going on right now um, and two or three little ones going on and then a possible new start. And that's just too much. So my January plans are to have a little bit of a January whip go. Meaning, I am going to um, focus work on my whips in progress, my works in progress, my whips. I'm going to focus on working on a few of them to get them over the finish line, to finish them, to be able to unkit it, to be done. So then, hopefully starting in February, I can focus a little bit more on finishing up some of my larger projects because those need to go too, because I want to do new things. And if you don't put time into the one thing, you live with one project for a really long time. And that's cool. There's some projects I'm loving living with for multiple years, like my Lady and the Unicorn Scarlet Quince Tapestry. Love it. That's going to be a part of my life for like five years. And it's great. But some of these other projects, I'm like, okay, you get a year tops, which means I'm going to need to start putting some more focus time into them, which means to do that first, we got to clear out some of these little ones. So January whip go, here we go. It also means that I am committing right now, don't hold me to it too strongly, but I am committing to not starting any large projects until at least July. Um, I'll start some little things. I got some cute little things I'll show you here in a second. I'll start some little things, but I'm not going to start any big projects. And I say that as I'm about to show you the one big project I am starting. So one of my favorite floss tubers right now is Julie. Um, her channel is Julie's Stitching Journey. She's awesome. Just such a down to earth, chill girl. Feel like we would be friends. I love seeing her stitching and what she's got going on. And she showed me, and one of her, me and all of her other subscribers, uh, her uh, stitch along that she was going to do from Forbidden Fibers Co, which is online, Forbidden Fibers. And it is, Gilmoreisms. So for all of you girls like me, millennial women, um, who love the show Gilmore Girls, it is a series, it's a panel series of Gilmoreisms that are going to come out. We're going to get one new pattern every week from Forbidden Fiber Co. And it starts on New Year's Day. So I'm super excited. I just got it all kitted up and ready to roll. Um, but this is kind of, let me show you, this isn't, so I don't have the pattern to show you obviously, but this is kind of the general way it'll look. So there's going to be the different panels with different sayings in them. And I think it's going to be really cool. So if you would like to join me in the stitch along, do it. You still have some time. So it starts New Year's Day, January 1st. It is Gilmoreisms from Forbidden Fiber Co. It is a really cool pattern. You can buy it as just a pattern or you can get them to send you it all kitted up. Pretty cool. Uh, and of course, if you buy the pattern, it's just a uh, automatic download, which I'm a big fan of. So yeah, I'm excited to start my Gilmoreisms. I'll show you, I've got it all kitted up and ready to roll. I feel like I am not organized today. We're just, we're just going with it. 
We're taking the punches as they come. I'm talking about stuff as I think of it. We're loosey-goosey over here. So I got it all kitted up, ready to go on my one of my new scroll frames that I'll tell you guys about here in a little bit, but I am super into this. I can't wait to show you. So yeah, this will be my Gilmorisms. And as I stitch along, I'll unroll the bottom and keep it going. It's gonna be beautiful. So yeah, that's my new start that I'm allowing myself in January. Um, as far as other stitching plans, let's see what my notes say, because I did think about this. Oh yes, so January, whip go. Gonna knock out a couple of the smaller patterns that I've had lingering and that need to need to cross finish line. Um, then my goal for the year of 2024 is to put 2,000 stitches each month into my Lady in the Unicorn pattern. So that'll put me at 24,000 stitches for the year. That's a banner year for me getting that done, which is good because of the 139,000 stitches in it. I haven't quite crossed over to 70,000 yet, and I'd really like to put a big dent in it. We'll see. So that's my goal, to try and focus on that big one, 2,000 stitches every month, and then hopefully pick one or two other large projects that I have to put a thousand stitches or, or significant amount of work into each month as well. Kind of get those over the line. Like I said, I'm wanting to clear out some of my whips and have some of my larger projects with me for less time so I can do other things. I want to stitch other stuff. So yeah, that's it. Those are my plans for 2024. Um, my floss tube plans for 2024 are gonna be mostly to keep doing this. I'm having a really great time connecting with this wonderful community, um, with learning what you guys are doing, getting so many helpful comments and um, suggestions. I, I am taking all of them, by the way, <laughs> all of them. One of which being, I had spoken about, no, saving that. So my floss tube plans, we'll go back to that just to keep making floss tubes. I'd like to do more focused videos um, that are skill set based, like walking through, yeah, I've talked about it before, but like walking through how I kit up a project, walking through getting my fabric ready for a project, um, using the scroll frames, how to actually roll the fabric on the scroll frames. I'm not perfect at these things. I get better every time I do it. Um, and I know that when I was learning how to do it, those videos that showed you how like to attach your fabric to a scroll frame were just invaluable. It's such a great resource. It's like having your friend there to walk you through it. Um, so yeah, gonna do more of those. Um, just more skill set based and more topical um, as well. So with that being said, I think I have some haul to show you guys. Let me make sure that's what I have. Yeah, I have haul. And the haul comes in three sections. So we have act one of haul. Act one of haul is my um, local reuse craft store. I sing their praises every time I can, but a thrift store for craft supplies is literally my dream place. And every time I go visit them, Thistle up in Denton, Texas, they do me right every single time. This time when I was there, it was right before Christmas and they had all their Christmas stuff out and they had all of these little kits for a dollar. They were one dollar each. It was such a steal. So we have a couple of kits from this uh, designer called Jan Lin. It's just a cute, cutie little Santa Claus. And these kits come, most of them come with the floss. I'll probably use the kitted floss, it might depend. Some of these kits are kind of older and it'll just depend on how vibrant the colors have stayed and if I wanna substitute anything for my, my own collection. But yeah, so this one's a beautiful card. And then I have a couple of Mill Hill kits and I have seen, let's see what we can do about that glare. I have seen other floss tubers make beautiful Mill Hill kits with the beading and it's been something I wanted to try. So I was just over the moon that they had so many at Thistle for me to snag up, snatch up and take home. So this one says Noel, it's got the beautiful trees, um, comes with the, the fabric, the floss, and then the beads in this kit. So your girl's gonna learn how to do beading on her cross stitch. 
see how that goes. Got another Mill Hill with this cutie little snowman. That's gonna be adorable. Another Mill Hill. And this one says St. Nicholas on it. Let's see, oh, this glare is the, gonna be the death of me today. I'm so sorry. Hopefully you guys are getting a good idea of how cute these things are. Just adorable. Oh, there we go. That works. Now I know how to do it. Yeah, so it says St. Nicholas also comes with the beading and everything in bolt to make it super cute. And then I have a couple of card kits that came from a company called Needle Magic Incorporated. I have never heard of them. They may no longer still be in existence, but I was lucky enough to snag them. And they again come with the fabric, the floss, and then you can see kind of the outline of the embossed card that'll um, be the frame for the stitching. So what I think I'm going to do with these, here's another one with this cutie little snowman. Isn't he adorable? I just love that. And then last one of my cards just says happy holidays. And for some reason, I don't know why, but those down here, those are bells but it looks like a turkey and a cornucopia to me. So I don't know if maybe I need to lean into it and just like turn it into a turkey and a cornucopia, make it a Thanksgiving happy holidays. Um, we shall see, but they're bells, they're bells. So I got those little kits and I think what I'm going to do is stitch them up. They're gonna be really quick little stitches and then have it as part of my next year's Christmas decorations to have them hanging in a place where I get hang all my other Christmas cards that I get every year. Um, have some pretty like wall decoration that I can put them all and have interspersed with the ones that come from family and friends, the beautiful stitched ones. So that's the plan, should be beautiful. I also picked up two more other kits, which is funny, I'm not normally a big kit stitcher, but these things were so cute, y'all. I just, I had to say yes. So this one is a, what is this supposed to be? Oh, it's a window. Um, what they call it, like a light catcher. It is a beautiful butterfly with these gorgeous um, colors. It looks exactly like stained glass. I just thought that was lovely. So it comes the full kit with, of course, it comes with the floss. It comes with the ribbon that'll be attaching the two different pieces and then the hard plastic um, cross stitching. It's not fabric, but what I'll be stitching on. The stitch material, not sure. Not sure what you call that, but. And then last but not least, there was a full dimensions kit, which is so beautiful. What a great find. With this gorgeous bicycle and the flowers. I thought these colors were lovely. And it says, it's all about the journey. Isn't that the truth? So this will be fun to stitch. Comes with everything involved as dimensions kits always do. So this will be a good one to get started. Um, this looks, feels very spring to me and it's small. This one doesn't count as a big project. Let's see, what's the stitch size on this? It's seven inches by five inches. And I'm not seeing a stitch count here, but y'all it's small. This one doesn't count as a big stitch project. So I can start this before July. Yeah, I think this might have to be a spring start. Isn't it cute? So that is my reused craft store haul. Um, and then that same day, I was just excited to get new cross stitchy things. And I was going to Michael's to pick up a couple of things for the holiday stuff. And I found a 30% off your entire purchase coupon from Michael's. Golden, right? 30% off. And I just went, you know what? I'm gonna go buy all the floss. I'm gonna go buy all of the DMC floss. I'm tired of piecemealing it together. I'm gonna buy all the floss. And your girl did. I stood in the floss aisle with an app that I've used called Threadaway that um, I've been tracking what floss colors I have. And I picked up every single color of floss that I did not currently have. With my 30% off coupon, it cost about $45, so. I splurged and got myself everything. Sometimes I feel very blessed that we have such a cheap hobby. 
you can spend a lot, but also floss, especially here in the United States, it's just cheap. We're very lucky. So I came home, I put it all into my floss away bags and it's completely unorganized now. So it's like a bounty of new DMC floss, but I have all but like 20 colors now. How exciting is that? I can just make whatever I want. I should be able to just go and pull and kit stuff up. I felt like that when I was getting the Gilmore Girls, the Gilmore Isms sal ready to go. But of course, it's uh, two of the colors I don't have are in that. So I'll have to go order them or find them. But yeah, now I have this complete problem that is a blessing of riches, an embarrassment of riches, that I have all of this floss and I've got part of it just completely filled up in this little container. Literally just pulled this off the wall to put it all in. In this bobbins box. In this secondary box. You can see all my floss away bags stuck in there. Total haphazard, no organization whatsoever. In this box, it's a beautiful box that a friend made for me. Just floss away bags. Just we're madcap over here. Floss everywhere, floss away bags everywhere. No organization. So that's going to be my next crafting project is going to be to organize all of this floss in a, in a uh, orderly manner. If you have any favorite ways that you organize your floss away bags, oh, please tell me. Please tell me what you got going on. I'd love to hear about it. Um, so last third act of haul is what Santa Claus brought me. And by Santa Claus, I mean my adoring husband who supports my crazy nerdy hobby. First things first, I got these, they're called handy clamp scroll frames. They are the best thing known to man. I am in love with this. I got all of this stuff on, oh, he purchased it on 123 Stitch. And I have to give a huge shout out to 123 Stitch. So he made the purchase weeks ago. And apparently something happened with the delivery to the post office. It didn't come. It wasn't here even on Christmas. He contacted them, was able to go to their warehouse, which is in DFW close to where we live in Dallas. They gave him everything he had ordered. So second fulfilled the ship, the order twice to get it to him again, just walked out. He got everything he needed. He said it was the most easy, wonderful experience working with them, not only online, but in person. And they have made a customer for life out of me. So one, two, three stitch. Thank you so much. You made Christmas wonderful. But the handy clamp system is a system of scroll frames. Um, scroll frames are by far my favorite way to have larger projects. They're just wonderfully, it's nice to be able to spread out the fabric. You can see everything that you're working on. You don't have to move the hoop. You're not constantly tightening, re-tightening things like you do with hoops. Um, oh, and I can put it on my stand to use two-handed stitching and go faster. I'm all about it. So I've tried a couple of different, actually I've tried every way. I have tried every way of scroll frames. I've done the kind that's basted on where you literally sew the fabric onto a fabric strip that's attached to the dowel rod in the frame. I have done the clamp version um, or the split rail rods where essentially it's a piece of wood that's partially split into two and you feed the fabric into it and then clamp down the sides and it stays in place. Um, both of those ways work pretty well. They're not easy to get um, on and off. When you're basting, you're literally stitching on the fabric onto it. So it's, it's gonna stay in place. The split, split rails, I can't say that for some reason. The split rail rods are very challenging to get in. Maybe some base crack the code, but your girl's not very coordinated and it doesn't go very well. So. When I saw these online, I was like, oh, we gotta try this one. This is, it's all the genius of a Q-snap joined with a scroll frame. Y'all, it clamps down, look at this. Boom. And your fabric just goes in there, easy on, easy off. I've already put my new, I've already put two projects onto these already. It came in a pack with three. Um, two of them are 14 inch rods, and then this one I think is a 10 inch. It's a little smaller. <clears throat> Fantastic. Working like a dream over here. Huge fan. 
So yeah, I highly recommend if you're into this, and they're called the Handy Clamps. The easiest scroll frame you will ever use. It's from Frank A. Edmonds Co. That's right, Frank A. Edmonds Co. Fantastic. So this was one of the things I've got, taken it already to use. Santa Claus was so good to me. I also got some more floss away bags so I can put away all the rest of the fabric, or uh, rest of the floss that I am gonna get when those colors come. I got a rotary cutter for cutting fabric. I've already used this thing and it is awesome. You just line it all up very carefully and make sure your hands are out of the way and done. Love it, love it already. I also got some more tulip needles. Put this up here so you guys can see. These are Japanese made sewing needles that are, to me, the best. I've tried DMC needles, they're no good. I've tried the Bowen needles, lots of people really like those. I'd say they're okay. I wasn't really blown away. I didn't feel like they are very smooth. But tulip needles, they come in this cute little, cute little vial. It's the best packaging ever. I think that makes me like them a little bit more. But they are absolutely butter just butter so i got a new set of tulip tapestry needles they're absolutely lovely i've already got one set up on my new kitted project ready to go and then last but not least i got some stitchy mail because my just cross stitch magazine came out absolutely love this is my first time to get it like in the mail and there is something so childlike excitement you know when you get mail that's so exciting so i got my stitchy mail um i didn't love a lot of the patterns in this but i think a lot of it's because i'm not a big christmas stitcher um i know a lot of people really love holiday themed stitching oh, so this doesn't grind it doesn't get me going so but i can't wait for my other issues that are going to come out soon too and then finally, from the advice of all these wonderful people, I was talking in a previous floss tube about the challenges of storing all of my scroll frame projects, that I didn't have a good place to put them, that they could be safe, that they were gonna be handled, um, that I could easily get them in and out to be able to move. And so many people had the great suggestion of buying a wrapping paper container organizer. And that's what I did. I got this one at Target. Let me put the top on it so y'all can see exactly how it is. I got this <laughs> at Target. You can see how large it is, quite large. $12, y'all, $12. It is a latching gift wrap bin. Comes with the latching lid. The lid has a handle, so it is easy to pick up and move. And every single one of my scroll frame projects fits in here perfectly. I have them all just able to reach in and pull out with their little containers. What they have. Oh, here we go. Yes, here's one that I kitted up on my new the clamp scroll frames. It's not my best rolling job, um, but here we go. You can kind of see this was my first linen project. It's a coffee bean sampler. It's pretty good. The tension's not the best, but that's user error. It has nothing to do with the clamps. Um, yeah, and it all looked like butter. Just rose right in here. Fantastic. So I think that's everything, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, for joining me on my stitching journey. Um, and I would love to hear about what you guys have going on. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. And here's to a happy new year. Take care of yourself.